We're counting down to 2014 with a look back at 2013. From lawsuits to tornadoes, many of the biggest education stories of the past year were far from a classroom. News 18's Dan Klein reviews the top education stories of 2013. Much of the year's top education stories begin January 19th as Glenda Ritz is sworn in as the state superintendent of public instruction, having beaten incumbent Tony Bennett in the previous November's election. She remains the only Democrat to hold statewide office. In May, technical issues plague ISTEP testing, affecting nearly 80,000 students, including many at Lafayette area schools. Ritz is seeking more than $600,000 in damages from test producer CTB McGraw-Hill. A hired independent reviewer in July found that the problems had little effect on scores. Still, school officials have doubts. How can you can say that all students uh, had an equal shot at doing well? There's, that's still questionable, I think, in a lot of people's minds. On September 18th, ISTEP results are released months later than usual. Ritz's predecessor, Bennett, stayed in the news even as he had moved on to a similar post in Florida. In July, an Associated Press investigation of Bennett's email showed he possibly manipulated data so Indianapolis Charter School Crystal House could get a better letter grade. But the legislature's review called the changes plausible because formula changes were used consistently on more than a dozen other schools. Bennett came under fire again in September, accused of violating election laws by having state employees work on political activity. The inspector general filed a formal complaint with the state's ethics commission in November. A hearing is scheduled for January. But Ritz was immersed in legal battles of her own. She sued the State Board of Education in October for asking the General Assembly to calculate the letter grades for each school, taking the power away from the Department of Education. It was dismissed after Attorney General Greg Zeller successfully argued she could not file a lawsuit without his approval. Five days later, there was this. This meeting is adjourned. That should be a vote oh, on adjournment. This meeting is adjourned. Council, does that have to be a vote on adjournment? You can't no, adjourn without no. a second, can you? This meeting is adjourned. A chaotic scene, Ritz, the chair of the State Board of Education, adjourned the meeting before the board could vote to move oversight of a career readiness program away from the DOE, giving it to an agency created by Governor Mike Pence this fall. Both sides met with an outside mediator earlier this month, but have been unable to come to terms. A disagreement between a superintendent and school board sent shockwaves through Benton County this fall. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate you all being here. More than 130 came out in force to protest a contract change for Destin Haas, giving him a $25,000 payout to leave early. I'm not going to make any comments on what the reasons are. He was hired by North Newton two nights after the Benton vote. We're excited about getting Dustin Haas. Frankfurt schools lost three administrators over criminal issues. Middle school principal Mike Edinburger faces six felonies in Michigan in a child porn case. His replacement, middle school principal Dennis Howland, faces a pair of OWI charges in Boone County. And assistant high school principal Tori Horner resigned, accused of criminal conduct with a child. I could understand if, if parents, if their confidence is shaken. In May, after 63 years of service, Woodlawn Elementary School in Monticello closed for the last time. The year in education saw new laws take effect in July, including an expanded voucher program and an anti-bullying legislation. A new alternative school in Reynolds called The Crossing opened in August. Mintani Elementary and Southwestern Middle School students were sent to a new school of their own after a November tornado did millions of dollars of damage. Kindergarten through sixth graders are now at First Assembly Community Ministries. Seventh and eighth are at Weill Ridge Middle School. From the classroom to the courtroom, one of a number of education stories from 2013 that will continue to make headlines in 2014. For News 18 Year in Review, I'm Dan Klein.